Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ronan Vico and in this video we're going to learn how to get just the data that it was updated in SharePoint list when I trigger a flow when an item is modified. Basically, if I change here this value from orange to apple, I can see here on the SharePoint list a version history where is stored exactly the data that was updated. So here I know fruit was changed to apple by this guy at this date and time. When I go here to this flow, we're going to see a run that just show us all the data from this item. So if I see here, in this compose or even in this raw outputs, we're going to check here all the data about the item. Okay, we have the column fruit was changed to apple, but I don't know if the name was changed, the age, the ID, I don't know what columns was changed in this trigger, right? I have all the data and not just the data that was updated. So we can get this value using the version history. I can use the version history to tell me what column was changed. So how to do it in the Power Automate Cloudflow? Let's go. In your Cloudflow, you're going to insert here a new step. Let's edit this flow, add a new step using my SharePoint. So SharePoint connector and at the SharePoint see more, we're going to find get changes for an item or file so this step right here this action called get changes for an item show us exactly the version histories so i can select here my site again subscribe and of course subscribe to this channel if you are not subscribed the tv new list the id is going to be the id from the trigger flow of course so id and here is what we need to use to get the version history. We need to tell this step, the trigger window start token or item version or undate. I recommend and I prefer to use the version label because it's so much more easier. Take a look here. What is the version history? It's this number right here. One, two, three, four. So I think it's more easier to deal with this version number, right? So I need to insert here since when until when, right? So here is going to be the first version. So I want to see all the modifications from the first to the third version, for example. So when I use this since and this until, I'm going to have which columns was changed from here to there. So if I just want to understand what column was changed from this version to the last one, I need to insert three and two. So the current version minus one, right? I just need to subtract one from the current version. So it's pretty simple to do it. Let's test it first, just to you to understand the following parameters. I'm going to use si since 1.0 until now, the current version. What is the current version? The current version, of course, is going to be version number from my trigger. So I'm going to see what was the changes from the first version uh, until now okay let's test it save and test it with the last last user trigger the recently user trigger okay and we're going to see what we have here as raw outputs take a look I have here all the column that was changed. That's pretty cool, right? So I have here that the fruit was changed from the first version to the third one. I also know the column modified was changed too. So I can see exactly all the, ver all the columns that was changed from the first version to this one if i run it it again but now changing the name adele to ronan 
if we check right here, we're going to see what was the changes from the first version to the version number four. And we can see that the name was changed, the fruit was changed, and the modified was changed. But if you see here on the version history, if we are, we are trying just to understand what was the column that was updated, we should be seeing just the version, the current version, against the last version. So the name was changed. But it is not right yet. We are seeing the actual version against the first version. So when we see the current version against the first one, we can see that the name was changed, the fruit was changed, and so on. So I don't want that. I, I don't want to see all the modified columns from the actual version to until right the first one. I just want to see. I just want to see the current version, right? Until the current version, but since the integer of version history. So I am casting, I'm converting this version number to a number, right? And I'm going to add minus one here. So I'm adding minus one. So I'm subtracting one from the current version number. So I will have since, for example, 3.0 until 4.0. So here we're going to see just the column that was recently updated. Let's check it out. I'm going to save it and run it, it again. I'm going to use the last triggered flow. And we're going to see here on the raw output comparison from the current version with the last one. And we can see that just the name and of course the column modified always going be, to be here, right? Was changed. Now that we have exactly the properties that was changed, that was updated, we can use it on our email or a notification, on team message, I don't know. You can use it, this data, like you want. For that, we need to use the if function. So let's use it here so you can understand what I am talking about. I'm going to insert here a compose where you can build your HTML or something like that. In this compose, I'm going to insert an expression where I'm going to insert the if. So we're going to use the if function and check if the column name has changed, then concat the new name is with the new name. Else, I'm going to insert a blank value or a new value if you want, new, add. So here, we're going to see the text the new name is and the new name, if the column name is changed. Also, I can do it again and again and again for all the properties that I think is uh, usable for, for me. So for example, I'm going to insert again, if the column fruit is changed, concat, the new fruit is with the value of the new fruit. fruit value else I'm going to insert the new you can see the, the all this expression here take a look if has changed concat the text with the value else insert new and I'm I'm going to insert all the data that I want in this email or notification and etc and when I run it, I'm going to check it, run it, running it again with the last trigger. We can see here in that compose, just the new name is here because the fruit wasn't changed. So that way is how you can 
get just the column and the new column value to use on your notification or anywhere that you want okay so i think that i'm going to end this video i did it step by step i hope that you understood and liked it if you watch it, this video to the end please comment down your feedback and also comment the word orange then i will know that you watched this video to the end it's a magic word that i leave at the end so i know who watched it until the end thank you so much for watching please consider to share so i can grow up this channel the thumbs up button and uh we see you in another video in another class thank you and please subscribe